Hi, I'm Chris Bullock. My wife Carolyn and I are owners of The Wandering Bull, LLC. We're one of the country's largest Native American craft suppliers. We sell a wide range of products, including craft materials, contemporary art, and antiques. My parents started the business in 1969 when we were kids, running around at powwows. And more than 50 years later, our family business is still going strong. Today we're going to work on quill wrapping and I have several examples here in front of me that I'll show you first and then we'll talk about them and then I'll show you how to do it. So first of all, um, quill wrapping, we're using porcupine quills. Some are dyed, some are natural and we're going to be wrapping on split ash and also wrapping on rawhide. The plains people wrapped on rawhide and this is a hand-painted eagle feather, um, painted by my friend. And that piece of quill work is on rawhide. And the feather's decorated with horsehair at the end and a little tough of rabbit. And once again, a little fluff right there. So that's a quilled feather. Here's another example. This quill, quill feather is cut in the middle with a little serrated cuts on the sides and quill wrapped right in the center. There's also a little piece of quill wrapping right on, right down the center, and that guy is quilled on rawhide. The, you can note the colors, those are dyed um, the, with blue fluffs and a little leather end. Here's another example. I basically have stripped all of the feather off of the quill. A little bit of decoration at the top, and I have quill wrapped this whole thing. I'll turn it over. And here are my knots. The knots are on the back. Try to be consistent, keep them on one side or the other. And this is a roach spreader. And uh, we'll talk about the roach spreaders later on. So here's finished quill slats. These would be the bottom of a pipe bag. This side has the, the knots. And note, tiny, tiny little knots. The quills are very thin. They probably get a wrap or two wraps per quill. So awful lot of knots traveling right down the spine. We'll jump into an advanced project. This is a quill wheel and turn it over. The knots are on this side. You can see them there. Once again, tiny fine quills. The finer the quill, the finer your, your project will be in the end, I probably get one or two complete rotations or wraps of that quill before it requires adding another quill. And we're gonna talk about adding another quill um, as we go through the day. This is a Cheyenne style pipe bag. This style of pipe bag was 1850s, 1880s, deerskin upper, beadwork, and once again, that quill wrap with deerskin fringe below. I'll turn it around, and the knots are on the back. You can see the knots, um, and this one I probably made 40 years ago, so some of the quills are a little loose. This is a Lakota pipe bag, probably 1880s, 1890s. Quill panel, very large quill panel at the bottom. Turn it over. You can see the knots. And once again, probably a wrap or two wraps per quill before requiring to add another um, quill. Project like this, very advanced. You're better off starting with something simple like the quilled feather. Do a little quill work, attach it to a nice feather and before you jump into a, an extensive project like this. And the last example I have is an Eastern Woodlands headdress. It's constructed on rawhide and I used a fawn skin for the brown and white dots, but the quill work, as you can see, runs from the front to the back, is done on split ash. Very traditional style headdress for the Eastern Woodlands folks. Probably this style of headdress would be worn, oh, late 1700s. 
right up to present day. The little tubes on the front are ash, hole drilled in them, and quilled wrapped. The quill wraps go all the way around the tube, and basically I am able to get one wrap per quill. The knots are tucked in the back, so they're hard, hard to see. I'm going to use a piece of split ash, nice white quill. I'm going to snip off the, the business end, which is the black point. I'm going to flatten that guy. Basically, I'm going to lay the quill that going the same direction as the, the split ash. I'm going to take it, fold that, and basically wrap over that fold. So I got two wraps on that quill. A little bit of a tail. That's enough to tie the, the next knot. So I'm going to put a clip on that, hold it in place, select my next quill. So the black end of the quill is the business end. That's the point that's covered with tiny little bobs that's going to stick in your hand, stick in your finger, or in your dog's mouth, the tongue. Um, and not really want to come out very easily. The opposite end is what sticks into the animal, the porcupine itself, and that pulls out of his skin very easily and then will remain in yours very easily. So basically I'd snipped off the tip, flattened it, so I've squeezed out all the air. Now I'm gonna lay that quill on top of the other quill. We go in the same direction. I'm gonna twist the two. Now I'm gonna take the quill and wrap basically over that, that knot. So the second quill wrapping will, will hold the first one in place. And now I have satisfied, I have enough of a tail to add the new quill. I'm gonna put the clip on it let it sit for a second. When the quills are wet, they're soft and pliable, but as soon as they dry, they're gonna be stiff and rigid, and that knot is gonna basically hold itself in place with the, with the wrapping over it. Let's jump into a red quill. These quills I'm using are nice and long. It's easy for a good example to show you the technique. When you buy quills, they'll be assorted short ones from an inch all the way up to three inches. A three inch quill is very rare. I mean, they, you do get them in the ounces, but not many. You're gonna to wanna to sort your quills for your projects and save your long quills for something that's bigger in diameter that's going to require a longer quill. Same with this, the split ash on this guy or the ash tube on this. I, wanted, I saved my long quill so I could get all the way around that project. So I'm going to wrap that, hold my knot. And that little bit of a tail is not enough to, to tie the next knot. So I'm going to have to back it up. That will give me plenty of quill to um, add the new one. So once again, I'm going to take my new quill that I'm going to add. I'm going to use the end that sticks into the animal, not the, not the black tip. Lay it on top. Take the two, twist them. 
take that quill, wrap right around that knot. And that extra right there is enough to add the next quill. I'm going to let it rest there for a moment. Just let it rest to dry a bit. And once it dries, it, it does hold in place. When it's wet, they're slippery, um, difficult to work with. So I've got a white section, a red section. I'm going to go back to the white. And then we'll basically show you how to end this guy. Snip the tip off. So we're basically going to, this will be the last quill. We'll wrap over the, the knot and then I'm going to apply a, a piece of thread, wrap over the thread, stick the tip of the quill in the loop and I'll show you, and we'll pull the thread and it will pull the, the quill underneath our work. I have a nice twist. I'm gonna do one complete wrap. I'm gonna take my thread I'm going to do this on the back side. Wrap over that thread. Got one wrap. Let's go two. And that little bit of a tail. I'm going to stick inside my thread loop. Pull it. Voila. Porcupine quill work. I wrapped on split ash. We started with the knot here. Quilled down to this point here. I wrapped over the thread. Basically, I have thread like that. I laid it on, on top of that ash, quill wrapped over it, stuck the little tail right into the, the loop, and then pulled the thread through, which in turn pulled the quill underneath that last wrapping. Once it's dry and cool, that guy's gonna, he's gonna stay there. I'm gonna put the clamp on it just to keep it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Thanks for watching our videos. You can order supplies and learn more about Native American crafts by visiting our website, wanderingbowl.com. On our Facebook and Instagram pages, you'll find weekly specials, a schedule of upcoming events, and interesting historical facts about Native American culture. We not only sell supplies, we use them ourselves, as you've seen in these videos. And if you ever need help with an order or a project, you can always give us a call at 1-800-430-2855. We'd love to hear from you.